red light. There we go. Alright. So, guys, I found Rob Lloyd, who does have a... Yeah, this one. Uh, who has a... Well, you have a resemblance to someone of note. Yes, he does have a resemblance to me. Oh, yes, you can look at it that way, too. That's right. Now, um, <laughs> but, now, this is Rob Lloyd. Rob Lloyd, the man who did the one-man Doctor Who show. That's right. Did Science of the Doctor. Yep. And then, uh, oh, that's right, went to Edinburgh Fr Fringe Festival. Edinburgh Fringe Festival you last year. Yep. Show there. And on top of that, when the BBC did their Round the World tour, saying, we need one fan from each country, before they show Deep Breath, they pick you. They did. They picked me. I didn't even need to bribe them or anything. I wasn't even a close second. Oh, you, but you were there. You were there when we uh, filmed That's, for the BBC. That yeah, but the BBC came back and filmed a bit of your show, and I got to be in the audience. You were. Yeah, and you can be seen in the documentary. You yep. are there. And my friend, too, actually, he was there, too. Dressed Sean. as the master. Yeah, and yep. he was next to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, uh, what's it like being you? <laughs> Um, it, well, it's like being you, just a little bit taller. That's true. Yeah, not mm. as ginger. Well, yeah, well, I play the ginger doctor, you just play it being tenant. Yes. Um, I, I've been very, very fortunate. I've mm. had, yeah, I've I embraced the whole Doctor Who thing and the Doctor Who fandom uh, about three years ago. Mm. And it's just been, I've, I've been working in the comedy scene for about eight years before that. Uh, and I always wanted to work on solo shows. I'd work the most in sketch comedy groups and improvisation groups. So I thought, how can I feel comfortable on stage on my own? And that was to focus on my obsessions. So my first solo show was about Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. And my second solo show, which has got me all this attention, is Who Me? And you were an art teacher. <laughs> Drama teacher. Drama, yeah, oh, drama, drama teacher. Drama teacher. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I said art. My okay. bad. No, I'm a performing drama. artist. I'm not yeah. like a real... Yeah. I, I wish I was talented enough to be an artist. artist. You merely just have to be as dangerously talented as <laughs> you already are. I like the word dangerous when you put in that. Um, yeah, you get too close to me. What? Just look I'm, out what happens. I'm just wondering what you're going to end up doing next. Um, oh, well, spoilers. Uh, that's what I'm working if on right like. now. I'm working on... Uh, I'm doing two solo shows next year for mm. Comedy Festival and for Melbourne Fringe. It, it, it should be pointed out is we're filming. We are currently at Armageddon 2014, yes. and so we're speaking from the past to the future. Are there zeppelins in the future? And being creepy. Yeah, uh, just let me know. Um, so yes, I'm working on part three of my nerd trilogy, which mm. was Sherlock Holmes first, uh, Doctor Who second, mm. and my next one which I'm doing at Fringe Festival 2015 will be about my obsession with Star Wars. Ah, okay, one man Star Wars show. One, one, one man Star Wars show about my obsession, my love of Star Wars and how that evolved or in many ways devolved with well, the prequels. I should ask you then, uh, what do you think of uh, like the upcoming movies? I, I like to use the word, I am cautiously supportive. Cautiously supportive. So yeah, That's I, new one, I, I, I like J.J. Abrams, yep. I like Lens Flares, I like uh, the fact that Loris Kazdan Sorry. has come back to write. And now we'll wait for the audience to pass. Seriously, guys, you saw it coming. He had the flash shirt on. Chuck. He did have a flash t-shirt on, so hopefully he went by really, that, really quickly. That doesn't help with the other two, although I'm wondering if this guy in the creepy J the thing is going to pass in front of us too. Oh. I think we want him to do that. <laughs> Could you just pass in front of the camera? <laughs> um, if you can get this, because it's just really creepy and I'd hate to miss the chance. <laughs> Um, well, now, uh, while he does that, and I'll flip, I'm just going to be really careful here. <laughs> do not, do, do not upset the serial killer. Right. If I've learned anything in this world, it's never upset a serial killer. Alright, now, um, I should ask then, uh, what do you think of Capaldi? I'm adoring Peter Capaldi. Yep. Peter Capaldi is incredible, amazing actor, mm -hmm. great range. Uh, great skill and nuances with these performances mm. and bringing something new to Doctor Who and a fresh approach which hasn't been done for quite a long time and really respectful to the past which I'm adoring. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, oh, oh, there's one other question then, Look, looking in your crystal ball because we're, again, we're on pre-record so we'll find out by the time this goes out if you're right what do you reckon is going to happen to Jenna Coleman? Because uh, we found out, we will we'll find out the Christmas special. Well, I don't think it's going to end well. Yeah. She's lied to Danny. She's lying to the Doctor. Mm. I think she's going to be left al all alone. Really? I think she's not, she's going to lose both of the two most important men in her life. Okay, that's Rob Lloyd's that's prediction. That's my prediction. I think I'm going to be completely incredibly wrong, but I think it's not going to be a happy ending for Jenna. Okay. I mean, for for <laughs> well, Clara. Clara. She's she's going to have a very happy ending. She's going to go on to do successful things and almost look as attractive as Peter Capaldi. <laughs> almost. Actually, One day she may get the eyebrows. 
I just realized there was one other thing actually, uh, because you also do the con guy. The con artist, yes. Yeah, con yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm interviewing people at conventions and vendors and special guests about mm -hmm. how the con scene in Australia works, how it operates, because it's become quite a popular thing over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And now it's huge with three big cons all around Australia, uh, how they differ, um, the strengths, weaknesses of each of them. Is there any difference between them or are they just all the same? Are you going to go to PAX? Um, I, well, it's a big gaming one, so mm -hmm. I may have to go as a newbie because I know nothing about computer games. I used to play my Super Nintendo in high school. Mm -hmm. I have a Wii at home that's gathering dust. Um, so, so I, yeah, I, I might go just as a complete novice. I would have thought you'd have a PlayStation 4 by now. No, no, no. Oh, no. Hang on, and shameless plug. I, I, Alien Isolation is good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. For, 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 no, first time in like over ten years, I've had a game that's actually scared me, and I knew I was I knew I was into it when I found I was holding my breath when the alien went past. See, I'm pissed, weak, man. I'm, I, I got scared by playing Mario Kart, so yeah. okay. I'm, I'm very easily scared. Uh, well, listen, if you're at PAX, I hope you'll catch up with us because we're going to be there. Yeah, of course, you're going to be there. 42 yeah. Gig Street, you've oh, got to yeah. be there. Well, we are. Press good. passes, wonderful things. Good, good, good. We don't do it just for the press pass. We do it to do wonderful interviews and bring all the all those interviews bring to people out there and get press passes. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the con. Thanks very much.